I'm Will, and I'm at Heroic Studios, and I did something really cool. Yeah. What's going on, folks? Welcome back to my channel. If I sound a little nasally in growth, it's because I've been fighting a cold the last few days, and it hasn't been pretty, and it sucks being sick, because you're bedridden, you feel gross, still gotta go to work, I hate it. But I'm starting to feel better, and I thought that I would actually get something out to you guys, mainly a video that I have been pondering around in my little head for as long as I've been sick, and I really wanted to kind of put it together. So, on the first day that I can actually talk and breathe through my nose, I decided that you guys deserve a little video. So. Before we get started, one quick announcement. If you haven't checked out my Patreon, go check it out right now. I have set up a free trial tier, meaning for seven days you can try my Patreon out for free and get one, that's right, one STL model uh, from that month. Whichever STL model is available and is out, or whichever one comes first, that is all yours. You get to try it out for seven days, and if you don't stay, no hard feelings. But if you do stay, welcome to the family. Go check that out. Link in the description for more information. So, I have been using my AnyCubic Cobra Max for a while now, and I have had some issues coming out of it. I don't know what's wrong with it, and no one can tell me what's going on with this with this printer. And it's driving me up a wall, and I, I, I can't, I cannot express to you how 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 much how far up this wall i am so before i go into how to get your prints smooth as eggs i have to tell you the story of how i got into investigating why my prints were not coming out as smooth as they possibly can and how i diagnosed the situation now before we get to the solution i'm just going to warn you right now that the solution is a no-brainer so don't hate me when i get there spoiler alert is nothing over the top you don't have to do anything that you, <laughs> you, you guys are going to help me when you finally figure out what the solution is so let me start from the beginning okay so i have been trying to get a mando helmet printed and i wanted to do it in a nice shiny silk filament something that's looking nice something that's shiny something that i could just take off the print bed put it on my head call it a day but my printer has been doing this really weird thing to where there hasn't been, I guess, the outer shell layer adhesion, something going on with it. I don't know what it is. You can see in this video that there is something going on with my printer, and I don't know what it is, but as you can see, it's only going on on one side of the Mando helmet. The other side is completely fine. There's nothing going on with it. So I had to diagnose the problem. I wasted a bunch of filament trying to do it, but hey, I did it for you, so now you guys can have the issue resolved if you're having this problem. Like I said, the, res the resolution is stupid. It's really dumb. So I went ahead, I posted on Reddit, trying to figure out if somebody else with a Cobra Max has this issue. Guess what? A lot of people have had this issue. A lot of people have not had this issue resolved. So I reached out to AnyCubic. AnyCubic, as you know, is probably, they were on Chinese New Year at the time. I got them. I reached out to them just as they were going on vacation, and uh, honestly, no one has ever gotten back to me, and it's kind of annoying because they're really good with their customer service, but that's besides the point. So I finally reached out to people on Facebook, in a Facebook group, the AnyCubic Cobra Max group, and one guy reached out to me, and he told me to check my bearings. Now, my bearings, the little balls that move along the axis uh, that are free rotating, as well as the one that rotates the bed, that moves the bed out, that is crucial so before you guys do anything make sure that those wheels are tight and grab a wrench and make sure that they're tight if they're moving along the railing they're not tight get underneath your bed tighten those wheels get onto your uh z-axis tighten those wheels and make sure that your belts are tight this is a no-brainer for most people who are 3d printing i don't normally check my belt so i thought that this would be a perfect time to check my belt so i did that and i started printing another Magneto helmet, okay? Now, the Magneto helmet that I'm trying to print is starting to show the same issues. As you can see, maybe you can, there is some like delamination going on right there. And it's only on one side because the other side, well, it's not as bad. So this is after I ended up tightening those wheels. I went ahead and I did that and I'm still getting these delaminations. So what's going on? My printer has been printing perfectly for the last few months since I got it back in August, and I'm just now seeing these imperfections. 
Normally, this wouldn't be a problem because at the end of the day, I end up sanding and I end up uh, using Bondo to cover up a lot of these layer lines and a lot of uh, painting and stuff to kind of hide all this stuff. So it doesn't really like bother me as it should. But if I wanted to do a raw print, something that I can just take off the bed and put it on, I can't have all this stuff, whatever it is on my print. It needs to be smooth. It needs to be flawless. So I started looking deeper into the issue and I, I got to tell you, I didn't find anything that was out of the ordinary. Here's the kicker. This was the issue that I found going on with not my printer, but the slicer itself. So as most of you know who watch my channel regularly, I don't like using Cura. I am a simplified 3D kind of guy. It is simple. It is in the name. It is easy to use. I have no problems with it. But because I got the Cobra Max, the people over at Anycubic, they already send you their print settings. So I have been using their default print settings for a while now. Now, not all of it. I've tweaked what I felt needed to be tweaked and I turned on certain settings that I felt needed to be turned on. However, Cura has so many settings that you can customize. And don't get me wrong, that's a great, that's great ideas for most people who like to use Cura because it gives them more customizing options for their printer. However, there are a lot of settings in there that are turned on by default or turned off and it takes you forever to go through each and every one of those settings to find out what is the problem with your printer. Now, I don't know which settings were turned on. I don't know which settings were turned off. All I know is that there was a setting in Cura that was causing this delamination to go on. Before anyone goes into the comment, yes, I had combing on, I had coasting on, I had all this stuff on to help prevent this. The only setting that actually turned out to fix the issue a little bit was having the print head go from inside out. And I forgot what the setting was that kind of sort of irons out that outer wall to kind of keep that away. Fixed it a little bit, didn't fix it a lot, okay? So I decided, well, why not go back to Simplified 3D? Yes, that was the problem. That was the issue. There was a setting in Cura. To this day, I don't know which settings it was. So I just decided to go from, Simp from Cura over back to Simplified 3D, and that is how I got this smooth as eggs. Red Hood helmet that I got from the old studio. This Red Hood Beyond helmet came out so freaking sweet. Look at the textures on this thing, dude. This looks so good. Now there is some issues at the top because I did print it upside down so the supports didn't meet it, but dude, this looks great. No defects, no nothing. This thing is as smooth as eggs. Except for the size here, getting more supports, but overall, I am happy with this thing and I'm so excited that this got done the way it did. Best part, it fits perfectly too. And I'm ready to paint this bad boy. As um, I was telling you, you watching this video because you wanna get prints like this. You wanna get them smooth as eggs. So I'm gonna show you exactly my print settings in Simplified 3D and you're gonna get prints just like that. So I'm gonna jump on my Simplify 3D and I'm gonna go through each and every piece of my settings. So grab a pen and paper, take screenshots, do whatever you gotta do because these settings are gonna get you this kind of quality prints. Are you ready? I'm ready, let's jump in. We are in Simplify 3D. I have my Cobra Max selected and I'm using a medium print quality, which is about a 0.2 millimeter layer height. All right, so I'm gonna go through each of these little tabs and point out all the settings that I use. So that way, when you use your Cobra Max, you can get a nice smooth as eggs print. Yeah, I'm gonna keep on saying that because that's exactly what it feels like and it feels great. All right, so my nozzle diameter obviously is 0.4 and my extrusion multiplier is 0.9. These come default, you don't have to change it, as well as keeping it on manual at a 0.4 extrusion width, all right? Retraction settings, this is to avoid all the stringing nonsense. I have it set at a distance of 10 millimeters at a speed of 40 millimeters a second. I don't have a uh, vertical lift turned on and I don't have a restart distance. My wipe nozzle and coast at end is off. So I don't use any of those extra nozzles I mean, not nozzles, uh, settings on my printer. I just leave it as is, all right? Moving on, layer. Actually, I'm gonna go back. 
pause the video here, take a screenshot of what you need, and then we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, layer. Like I said, we're running at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, and we're doing two, uh, two bottom and top solid layers with three perimeter shells. And like I said, we're going outside, out, inside out. So this is coming from the inside of the helmet and it's coming out. I don't have any of these things selected here. My layer height is 100% or first layer height. My first layer width is 50 and my first layer speed is 50%. I'm gonna tell you what my speeds are when we get over here into this tab. All right, additions, nothing really close here. I used to do it on a raft. I'm, I usually do it on a skirt, but most of the times I do it on a raft. It depends on the part. So the skirt here, I have one skirt layer here with two outlines, as well as it's about four millimeters offset from the part. The raft settings, I have one layer for a raft. You don't need to waste a lot of material for these things. Normally, I don't use a raft, but if I'm worried about something being not adhering properly, I go ahead and put a raft on there. Infill, triangular, rectilinear, 10% with a 15% outline overlap. Extrusion infill width is 100% with a minimum infill length of five. Combine infill every one layer. I'm sorry, I didn't go back. Go ahead. Um, I'm going back to layers. Pause it. Take a screenshot. Three, two, one. Additions. Pause it. Take a screenshot. Three, two, one. Infill. Pause it. Take a screenshot. Three, two, one. My angle is 60 degrees for all supports. So, I mean, I'm sorry, not supports. Uh, this is just default actually. So don't, don't worry about this, leave that alone. Now we're going into supports. 12% infill for my supports. I'm not using a lot of material for my supports. You shouldn't be using a lot of material for your supports. If your material for your supports outweighs the actual print itself, you're just wasting material at that point, so stop. Combine every support, one layer, and then dense infill percentage at 70%. I am using normal supports, meaning that it goes from the build plate and within the print itself, wherever there needs to be support. If you keep these settings, these supports will be easy to rip off. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, support resolution four and my overhang angle is always at 65 degrees. I don't go higher than that. And sometimes I might go lower depending on um, the complexity of the model, depending on what I'm printing. Horizontal offset from part, this will be how easy it is to remove the, the supports from your part, 0.8. I used to have it at 0.5, but it left a lot of damage. So 0.8 seems to be working pretty well for me so far. Upper vertical separation layers one and lower vertical separation layers one. Again, go ahead, take your screenshot. Three, two, one. All right, we're moving on. Temperature, extruder one, I run at 200 degrees. now. This is very important, so make sure you guys are paying attention. Apparently, any cubic had a boo-boo on their printers. They're running at 20 degrees higher than what they really are. So at two, 200 degrees, you're actually running at 220 degrees. So if you want to kind of fine-tune that, go ahead and do some um, PID tuning if you want, or you can just run it at 200 degrees, which is the equivalent on an Anycuber Max at 220 degrees. Yeah, it's stupid, I don't like it, but um, I'm gonna have to PID tune it, probably use a point interface or something like that. Uh, the heat bed here, 60 degrees, I keep everything at the same thing, nothing here to kind of change out, everything is pretty straightforward. So here's the extruder, take a screenshot, three, two, one, as well as the heat bed, here you go, take a screenshot, three, two, and one. Moving on to cooling, cooling. I don't have the fans on for my first layer, never. I leave it off, I let that first layer adhere to the bed, and then when it moves to the second layer, I have that fan cranked up to 100%. There you go, really simple, nothing much to be going into details here. So go ahead, take a screenshot, three, two, one, there you go. G-code, nothing really there. If you guys wanna take a screenshot of this page, I didn't really change anything here. Everything is what it needs to be. So go ahead, take a screenshot, three, two, one, and nothing here for all the scripts. So all the scripts are default here. So if you have a different ending script, layer change script, or starting script, that's entirely up to you, so go for it. Speeds, this is why I love the speed tab here because it's so easy just to kind of regulate your speed and know which one is being regulated. I have my Anycubic going at 60 millimeters a second. 
Now, I know it can go faster, but I'm not looking for speed on my prints. I'm looking for a nice quality print. So with these speeds, you're going to look at about a couple days trying to get a helmet done. But it looks great when it's finished and you don't have to worry about doing excessive post work, which is great. You want to get it sanded, painted and on your head and ready to go. Outline under speed. This is the outer layer. I have it going at 65% of the 60 millimeters, millimeters a second. Ah, millimeters a second. This is super important. This is what's going to lay that filament down and it's going to help it adhere to the other layers. And that's what you're going to get a smooth surface from. This is why my print is smooth because I have that outline under speed going at 65% of the main speed and it's laying it down nice and evenly and I have no issues there. Solid infill under speed. This is for the infills. Obviously, I'm going at 75% of the main speed just to get those infill layer lines even and lay down uh, to a to a nice little even layer. Support structure, 18%. I have it going at 18% because you don't want your support falling off mid print because it might be supporting a crucial part of your model. So make sure you have your printer going somewhat slow. And this is why you don't want to have a lot of supports going on your prints because this is the main speed. This isn't going very fast, 18% of 60. It's not going very fast at all. So you want to make sure that you keep everything even for your supports and you want those supports to be nice and solid. So when you're building those supports, uh, you know that whatever part is being supported is going to be supported and you don't have to worry about those supports collapsing or anything like that. X and Y moving speed, and this is how fast it goes between the X and Y axis, 80 millimeters a second, and then the Z moving speed, 16.7. I've never changed this since I've gotten Simplified 3D. I've left it alone. I don't mess with it. So go ahead, take a screenshot, take a pen and paper, write it down. You got three, two, and one. Moving on to other. I don't change anything here. I left everything here alone. You can go ahead and take a screenshot of this stuff too. Just go ahead and pause it. And my advanced settings, again, didn't change anything here. Simplified 3D is super simple. It's easy to use and I don't have to worry about some obscure rogue setting that is either on or off that's messing up my print. Everything that I need to know about my settings are all here and are easy to use. Yeah, it costs money. It's about $150 for a license, but that's a lifetime license. And yeah, I'm aware that Simplified 3D has been upgraded. The upgrade sucks. Don't get it if you don't need it. Stick with the basic and you're going to have some pretty awesome prints if you follow what I did in this video. Okay? Okay. Cool. Let's get back to the to my pretty face. And that's it. You guys got a lot of my nasally nasty voice in your ears for the last, I don't know, 15 minutes. I don't know how long this video is. I have to edit it. And you also got some pretty cool print settings to where you can go ahead and get some prints that are coming out smooth as eggs wait to sand this down and hit it with a nice metallic red and maybe matte it up i don't know i'm excited to get this thing on my face i'm printing out every single red hood helmet that i have so you know keep an eye out i'm doing a lot of projects right now so thank you guys for watching before we go a quick shout out to my patrons these guys have been very very awesome so if you're thinking about becoming a patron member Go ahead and check out patreon.com forward slash will at Rogue Studios. Remember, if you're not so sure, go ahead and try a free trial. You're going to get this month's uh, STL, just one of them, as well as being able to join in a group and join in conversations and stuff like that. Once I hit 25 patrons, I'm doing a milestone uh, reward for everybody. Even if you're on the free trial tier, you get it. So just make sure you stick around. We're almost there. So go ahead and visit my Patreon. Patreons, shout out Josie Ride, Katie Ruiz, Johnny Brown, Michael McCullough, Ivan Sombrana, Drake Wall, I hope I pronounced that right, Derek, Sean Connolly, Ian, Jeremy Harris, Andrew Skabinski, Nick Mason, Alex Gonzalez, George Oldfield, jo Joe Turner, and MK Fuzzy. Thank you guys for being awesome patrons. And if you guys aren't a patron yet, go check it out. If not, make sure you do hit that like and subscribe button, jump on the channel. I do appreciate all of my new subscribers. You guys have been great and I'm hoping to bring you guys even more how-to videos on 3D printing. So go ahead, do me a favor. It, it helps me out a lot. So that's it for me. I gotta go take some NyQuil because I'm exhausted, but I do hope you guys do enjoy this video. Share it with your friends, enjoy it and come stick around. Uh, next time I'm gonna be doing some live streams pretty soon. So follow me on Facebook heroic studios media uh, Over on Facebook link in the description uh, to catch my live stream. So take care you guys enjoy yourself and I hope what I have to um, I hope that whatever I 
told you guys here helps. Okay. I'm starting to lose my concentration. My <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Bye.